In this video, we are going to learn about Java input and output. How the user can give input and how we can print an output in the console. So let's go to IntelliJ. In order to give an user input, we need to use the scanner class. Okay. So type is C and I'm getting suggestions here. Scanner. So click on scanner. As soon as I type scanner, I'm getting an import statement here. See, import Java util scanner. Why I'm getting this? Because this scanner is a class present inside java.util package. Package means it's just like a folder. Suppose think that I am having a folder here, scanner. See, this scanner folder is present inside desktop java util. So this is the package name, desktop java util. Scanner is present inside that folder. Similarly, in IntelliJ, if I am going inside this scanner class, click on Control B if you want to go inside scanner class. So when I go inside the scanner class, see, this is a scanner class. It's a big program, okay? Don't want to think about it. This is a scanner class. This scanner class is present inside package, java.util package. So if you want to use scanner class, then we need to use the import statement. We need to use import then the package name java util scanner. In order to give input, we need to use the scanner class, create an object of the scanner class. Either you can uh, type scanner in small letter or we can give any name to the object. I'm going to give input as the name. Then put an equal to. So creating a new object, use the new keyword. Then again type the class name. Then put a semicolon. Now, the user is giving input or the system is giving input. Therefore, inside the bracket, we need to write system dot in. S should be capital. Okay. System dot in. Now, if you want to give an integer number as the input, then I'm going to use the object name. Here the object name it is input. Then use the in object name. Then put a dot. Now after putting a dot, we can see many methods. This M stands for method. There are different methods. For integer, see string int big decimal and all. For integer input, we need to use the next int method. So click on enter, put a semicolon. Now I need to store this into some variable. So use the assignment oper operator equal to then the data type it is int. Now I need to give a name for it. I'm going to give the name as age. Okay. This is the way for giving an integer as the user input. We need to use the next int method. Now, okay, let us run the program and see whether it is working. When we are running the program, we can see the console console there is a stop button the, con the program is still in running phase we need to give the user or the system is expecting some input from us so i'm going to give the input as 10 then i click on enter see now the program is finished in order to give integer as the input we need to use the next int method now suppose i need to print that as the output also and how we can print for input system dot in for output we need to use system dot out see then put a dot now there are different methods we are getting i'm going to use the first one print line method now inside the bracket i'm going to copy the variable name and paste it there now again i'm going to run the program okay so when i run the program the console is expecting some input from me i'm going to give 20 as the input so line number 9 is executed now now, when line, line number 10 is executed, we will get the output. So, when I click on enter, see, I am getting the output 20. Suppose if I am going to write here, output is 20. Okay, that is age. Again, if I am going to run the program, the console is expecting something. So, I am going to give input as 30 and see, output is 30. So this is the way for giving an integer as the input. Now similarly we can give any input like we can give short value, we can give long value, uh, double value, float value, big decimal, big integer, anything we can give as the input. 
we need to use corresponding next method for giving short value we need to use next short for giving long value we need to use next long method now if you want to give string as the input there are two methods okay so i'm going to use the object name of scanner class input dot see in order to print or in order to give string as the input we need to use the first method that is next input a semicolon and i am going to store it into a variable uh, named name i'm going to give the data type as string okay and in order to print that i'm going to use sout sout is a short form of system dot out dot print line inside the bracket i'm going to copy the variable name and give it there now when i'm going to run the program we can okay now the console is expecting some input from me my string input from me okay so i'm going to give the channel name smart engineer now when i am going to click on enter we can see we are getting only smart why because if you are using next as the method next method then it will take only the first token in the input we can see there are two tokens smart and engineer but if you are using the method next then we will be getting only the first token if you want to print the entire line what we will do we can duplicate this line in the first line and we can a dot there is one more method in order to print the string that is next line method okay put a semicolon first method we use we used is next now we are going to use is next line so this next line method will print the entire line okay I am going to run the program and again I am going to write smart engineer. See, we are getting the entire output. So, in order to get the entire output, we need to use next line method. In order to get only the first token, we need to use the next method. Now, if you are going to use both this method together, next and next line together, there will be one problem. I will tell you. So, I have created two variables name and full name. For name, I have used next method and for full name i used next line method then i am printing the statement or the output okay let us run the program and see what is the output we are going to get now the console is expecting something from me because the program is at line number eight so i know that i am using next method so i am going to give only one token smart okay now i am going to click on enter so when i click on enter the program should go to line number nine Let's see whether it is going to line number 9. I'm going to click on enter. But see, we are getting the output. My name is smart, whatever we have given. And my full name is, that is also coming. Why it doesn't go to line number 9? Because here at line number 8, we are giving an input, right? Smart. Then when we click on enter, in the background, what is happening is that there will be a slash n. When we click on enter, a new line. That means slash n. So next will take only this word. So the slash n will be pending there. Okay. So when I click on enter, this next line will read this slash n. Okay. Next method will take only this token. Remaining slash n is there. Because of this backslash n, this line is not getting readed. Okay. So in order to remove that, again we need to write a next line method okay so what will happen is that like this line number nine will read this backslash n okay this backslash n or the enter key and line number 10 will be executed let's run the program and see one more time i'm going to write smart then when I click on enter, the slash n will be there. See, this time we are not getting the output. Instead of that, the program gone to line number 10. We can write the full name, smart engineer. And when I click on enter, see we are getting both the output. My name is smart and my full name is smart engineer. Because of line number 9. This line number 9 is taking care of this backslash n. So we can't use this method together next and next line together we need to use in between another next line method 
that next line method will take care of this enter key or backslash n, a new line okay now to print the output there are three ways first one i am going to use system dot out dot print simply print okay put a semicolon inside the bracket i am going to write hi now when i run the program i will be getting the output as hi see there are no spaces no new line nothing then the new line or i am going to duplicate this line again i am going to type hi and i am going to write smart now when i run the program let's see what is output i am getting hi smart together i am getting okay but i need this to be in a new line i need to get this output in a new line what i should do i should use the system dot out dot print ln ln means new line okay i'm going to write um engineer but this time see we can't see any space here okay i'm going to run the program and we can see a new after engineer we can see a space there that means after line number 9 executing a new line will be generated so i'm going to comment this entire line and i'm going to write s out s out is a short form of system dot out dot print line i'm going to write hi then i'm going to run the program we can see that we are getting a new line here now i'm going to duplicate it and again i'm going to write smart see the difference now see we are getting the smart on new line again i'm going to duplicate it i'm going to write engineer so if you are using print line method we will be getting this output in a new line if you are using print method we will be getting the output in the same line okay now in order to get formatted output we need to use system dot out dot print f f stands for formatted output put a bracket then put a semicolon now i am going to show you an example of string formatting a string okay i am going to write smart then i am going to put a comma now inside the double quotes i am going to write percentage s s for string okay now if i run the program i will be getting smart as the output now if i want this output in uppercase letter we can put capital s here and now if i run the program i will be getting smart in capital letter so the above above commented line you can see right after percentage we can give flag width precision then the conversion character here in this example we have used only the conversion character percentage then s s is the conversion character for string now i am going to use flag flag can be minus or we don't want to give anything if i am giving minus then i am going to give width as 10 okay now if i am going to run the program we will be getting a space after smart total length of the output will be 10 and after smart is only 1 2 3 4 5 5 letters right after 5 we are getting 5 more spaces so total width will be 10 now if i am removing this minus we will be getting the space in other side i am going to run the program and we can see the output we are getting space in the opposite side okay now precision means if i am going to put dot 2 okay i will be getting or two letters see s and m total width will be 10 i'm out of this mark i will be getting only s and m precision 2 if i'm giving 3 then i will get three letters i'm going to give 3 i will be getting three letters so we can see first of all there is flag that is minus or plus then width that is for spacing or padding then precision how many characters we need then the conversion character it is s for string then if you are going to use d that is for digit and i am going to write 10 here okay 10. and when i run the program i will be getting 10 as the output okay now if i need to give spaces or i am going to give the width as 3 okay 
I will get the program. When I run the program, I will be getting space of one space I am getting before 10. If I want to give zero there before the space, I need to pad it with zeros. And I can write 0, 3. In the total length of the output will be 3. And before 10, we will be getting 0 if I am going to give 5 digit. So the total output length will be 5 and the remaining digit will be padded with zeros. Let's run the program and see, see, we are getting zeros before 10. So this is the way for formatting output using printf method. For output we can print using three method, print, print line and printf, printf for formatting the output. Mostly we will be using the print line method only.